Hello, I'm Luke O'Neill and here I am in my lab in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. So this week on my COVID-19 update, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, a huge amount of more information has come out. Huge optimism actually, this could be the one that really will be the game changer. Uh, first of all, they've said they can make a billion doses and they've said that will vaccinate an eighth of the world's population. Wouldn't that be tremendous? The developing countries can use a single shot vaccine, much more convenient, that's one thing. The second thing is it works against variants. And of course, one concern we have is these new variants and especially the South African variant, where there's a hint that AstraZeneca mightn't be as good. This one gave 83% protection against the South African variant. So again, that's a good sign. It's a vaccine that's a bit different to the Pfizer vaccine, it's the DNA for the spike protein in a special what's called a viral vector. They're using it, the common cold virus, adenoviruses. They've taken that virus, stuck in the spike protein, and that's the vaccine. So it's a very simple vaccine in many ways. Uh, they're also using it uh, for experimental vaccines for Ebola, Zika, and HIV. So many of us think now Johnson & Johnson may be the company that would emerge as the real contributor to beating COVID-19. And of course, new variants, I mean, it's still in the news a lot. There's three that have emerged and we watch them very, very closely. We don't want any more of these coming out is, is one concern that we have. And a very interesting question, where have they come from? And there's evidence that if you give someone convalescent plasma, who's got uh, COVID-19, that means you've taken antibodies from someone who's recovered and use that as a therapy, because of course antibodies will neutralize the virus and uh, limit it in various ways. It could be someone who was given that plasma and a virus then survives that plasma and kind of gets around it through evolution. That could be where new variants have come from. And there was an experiment done that kind of suggested if you give the virus convalescent plasma, it'll divide and new ones will emerge randomly that'll dodge that plasma. That means they could dodge the vaccine because of course the vaccine brings in antibodies as well. So one idea we now have is stop using convalescent plasma because that may well limit the development of these new variants. So one way to stop them is to alter the therapeutics that are being used. And that's important because we want to limit the, uh, the the arrival of new variants. And a big question that still is persisting, I mean, this is quite surprising in some ways, can you catch COVID-19 off surfaces? And of course, we're washing surfaces, we're washing our hands all the time. Well, it may be about to change. There's less and less evidence that this virus can spread from you touching a surface and then touching your face. There's very few examples of that being a route of transmission. So why do we think they were problems? Well, early studies would put some virus on a surface and then measure how long it would last and it can last on plastic for hours and hours and hours. That turned out to be a high dose of virus. The natural virus, if you will, if you cough on a surface, the virus dies quite quickly. So we may have been worrying a bit too much about surfaces. Now, what will this mean? The, um, the instructions might change, and the CDC are actually on record now as saying they, the surfaces are not a major source of infection. The New York subway spent over $300 million last year on COVID sanitation. Uh, sales of sanitation, pro sanitation products went up 30% last year to 4.5 billion. So this will have a big effect if, if the directive changes. Now it means you must still wash your hands. There's still a risk of say touching your face and then giving someone else the virus through hand contact. So it's still sensible to keep your hands clean, but keeping surfaces clean may not be as important as was seen, as was suggested in the past. And you can hear about these stories and more on my weekly COVID-19 update with Pat Kenny on Newstalk.